Hi everyone. So this video is going to be about how to plan a long distance drive in a Tesla Model 3 and the Polestar 2. It applies to any electric car to be, to be honest, but this is specifically aimed at people interested in the Tesla Model 3 or the Polestar 2 and how you would plan a long distance drive using those particular cars. Now, my number one tip with longer distance drives in electric cars is to try and plan your driving so that you stop at locations that have more than one charger. So if you, um, if you navigate somewhere and there's just a single charger, if it's in use, you could be waiting for 45 minutes to an hour, and that is slightly inconvenient. Also, it might break, so that's a little bit annoying too. Now, there are lots of charging networks around the country that have more than one charger on site. So obviously, the Tesla system is very good, and there are networks like Instavolt and Ionity and BP Pulse that sometimes have multiple locations. So that is my number one tip. Now, there are some very good apps that you can use to plan long distance drives. That includes ZapMap and and a better route planner and there are others as well so those you can use on your phone or on a computer to plan a long distance drive but both the tesla and the polestar 2 are very good at allowing you to plan your driving from within the car so what we're going to look at first is how you would do it in the tesla and it will uh route you to tesla superchargers and help you basically get to your destination without any problems at all and the system is very good and it works very well now polestar unfortunately they don't have their own network of charges so you have to rely on the publicly available other networks and these include bp pulse shell ionity instavolt ecotricity which sometimes don't work genie point there's so many there really are um, if you're in scotland charge scotland's really good there are lots to choose from and the best thing to do is to get onto zap map and become familiar with these networks but the polestar does do a really good job of routing you to your destination and planning in those stopping points so what we're going to do in this video is first show you how you would do it in the tesla and the second part will show you how you would do it in the polestar all right let's get started this is the map display here and the really nice thing about it is it's very easy to interact with you can move it around very easily and uh, basically you can uh, operate it like you would any map software on a tablet device now the easy thing on the uh, the tesla system is that it will show you these tesla superchargers so if you click on one of those it will tell you about the supercharger that um how many stalls it's got, the maximum charging speed, the fees, the idle fees, the location, and some information on facilities. So if we click on another one, maybe down here, let's have a look at what that set says. So yeah, that's Portsmouth, four stalls available. There are eight stores in total, 150 kilowatt max and the, the, the fees. You can also star it so you can save it for later and you can give it your own name if you wish as well and add it to the favorites. So looking again at this one over here there's eight stalls available and no one's using that at the moment that's a very new installation in crawley um, now the good thing about the supercharging network is that there are many of them and they are very reliable so you always know that there's going to be um, charges available there that will work so on the on the main the main network i'll call it uh, for example you might um, navigate to say a genie point or even a bp pulse location there might just be one and you could find yourself waiting quite a lot of time to a charge on one of those whereas the tesla installations always have many available and this map will show you how many are available at this time so that says two which means that there's uh, two stalls available six stalls in total but that means four of them are in use at the moment so it's a really clever system and it just makes owning an electric car so easy when you have the ability to charge at these kinds of facilities now this one for example is really good because it's located here in uh, maidstone and it's just off the m20 which is is good that's perfect but the one in crawley um near to me and i'm not saying this is a ne necessary big problem but you can see here that the m23 runs along here and it's over here near to the airport and it's actually it's actually around the back of an industrial estate the county oak retail park now this isn't necessarily a major problem but you can you can see that if you are trying to get somewhere and you want to stop off to charge here you're going to have to detour all the way from the m23 and then into this retail park and then back out and the truth is that's going to probably waste 15 to 20 minutes and generally speaking when you're trying to supercharge the idea is not to waste time but 
it is what it is. They've chosen to put it there for some reason. Um, well, it, there's a Tesla dealer. That's probably why they've chosen to put it there. It's a great opportunity for them to charge their own cars, but also to demonstrate to people how well the system works. But if you do go to this location, the nice thing is you can when it's not locked down just walk down the road there's a marks and spencers you can do some shopping but the thing is you wouldn't really be able to do that because you're, this is such a fast charging location you're not going to be there for more than uh probably half an hour to 45 minutes maximum but you could just about get a little bit of shopping done and then get back there if you wanted to there's a costa as well but that uh, is something to be aware of they're not always at the most convenient locations this one down here is on the a3 it's just off off the edge of the a3 so that's pretty good but um it, there is some variation in terms of where they're located and how convenient that might be now the nice thing is when you navigate a long distance trip on the tesla i'm going to put in edinburgh um, to start with so let's select edinburgh that's something i've already looked at and it will um calculate the route for you and then it will suggest where you should go to charge on route so it will start off by suggesting I go to the Oxford Supercharger and uh, get there with 12% and then charge up for 30 minutes and then go to the next Supercharger and then charge for 40 minutes and then arrive in Edinburgh with 12% taking 8 hours and 17 minutes. So you can then zoom in on this and you can actually look in a bit more detail to see where you're stopping and uh, what you're going to do. Now the nice thing with this is that when you navigate to that location you um you benefit in the tesla from the preheating feature so especially if it's cold it will warm the battery up and it will make sure that that battery is preconditioned to accept the optimum charge speed when you arrive at that charger so the the tip here is not to just navigate to the vague location but to actually navigate to the supercharger because if you just navigate to somewhere near it it won't know that you intend you intend to charge there so this feature is is really good and one that works very well and then you can just hit begin trip and it will it will then just start the navigation for you and it's saying 87 miles one hour and 24 minutes to uh get to the location where we need to charge so that is in in all honesty such a simple system um and if i now cancel that and uh let's uh navigate to edinburgh one more time um you can remove charging stops if you wish and then it will still allow you to calculate the route a little bit slow to load it seems and uh come on you can do it see it's interesting lt is quite weak here actually i've only got two bars i'm not sure what network they're on but uh the polestar is actually a lot better where i live if the polestar um lt is working and that's the thing it doesn't always work but if it is working then um it's i, I get better signal here than i do with this but um there you go so that's just giving the um the standard the standard option without charging charging needed to reach the destination so 453 miles 7 hours and 27 minutes so that's um that's a really easy way of planning your charging so if you then wanted to look in a bit more detail and see what it's saying well here's the oxford location 14 um 14 available so that uh yeah that works really well now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of that and um cancel it from the screen and then let's just zoom out again and so now that we know that we that it wants us to stop there if we select that we could have a look at um the the information so you can see that it's got facilities there now let's navigate there and what it will show you is you're going to get there with 12 percent so round trip estimate back to starting point is 22 percent so my point here is that you could um you could just navigate to that location and then decide where you want to go from from the next point onwards because my point here is that you're going to get there with 12 percent and that's that's absolutely fine but perhaps you think ah you know what i don't really want to do that because i'm not that comfortable i'm new to electric cars 12 percent seems a bit low and i actually haven't had lunch so i want to stop somewhere so you could think okay well i don't really want to do that but you know where it's taking you so you could then just use your own um your own way of deciding how to get there so i saw that it would take me past this one anyway so it's going to take me around the m25 so i'm going to select this one with 20 stalls available 24 that's a massive location okay that's heathrow terminal 5 um normally that would probably be okay but that's kind of a weird place to go during the lockdown but you could do if you uh 
you needed to and if you then navigate there it's going to say that you're going to get there with 27 percent so you might feel a little bit more comfortable thinking well i only want to drive for less than an hour for my first stop and then just build your route up from there so there's two ways of doing it letting it choose the entire thing for you or using that as a shell structure to then build your own route from then um let's try somewhere else i don't know let's try norwich for example and we'll see what it comes up with okay so navigate to norwich and it's saying we should stop in colchester to supercharge so 93 158 total trip so there we go it's picked 12 percent again but this is the thing 15 minutes it's given us for the charge because the reality of it is is that we only need a little bit of a top up to get there so this is something for people who are learning about EV driving is you don't always need to stop for a long time. A lot of people think, oh, it's going to take me an hour to fill up. But it's not like driving a fuel car. You don't go to the filling station to fill up or, or put lots of fuel in. You just top up with what you need to continue with your journey. Now, you might not want to arrive at Norwich with 24%. That might be inconvenient because perhaps you have some plans or something that you want to do. So then what you could do is you could think, actually, I'm going to stay more than 15 minutes. I'm going to top up to uh, 80% and then carry on um, spend half an hour of the charge or 40 minutes and then you would you would end up with more charge when you arrive there so you have a few different ways of doing it now i think that pretty much covers the uh the way in which i would cover this um in the tesla so the second part of the video you'll see how i would approach it in the polestar because the big problem with the polestar is that it doesn't have its own charging network and that is a significant downside when it comes to long distance trips Okay, so this part of the video is going to be focusing on how you would plan a longer distance trip using the Polestar's system. Now, obviously, the most significant thing is the orientation of the screen. The Tesla is a really nice landscape screen, and this is portrait. Um, and that is actually absolutely fine when you're driving, because in terms of satellite navigation, there's no problem with a, with a portrait screen. It's kind of what most people are used to because of the way in which it displays. And uh, the information that's on the side of the Tesla screen here is actually kind of, you know, where you can have that type of information on your driver's display. So, in terms of planning this now, you don't have the same features that obviously Tesla have with their supercharging network. So when you zoom out, you don't see any of that like you do on the Tesla. Now, there's two there's two options. When you are located somewhere, you can press down here and you can go to your main page and you can press this electric charging button display and that will show you um, local charger so i'll just stop it from zooming in so you can see what it does you've got charge master uh, slow and we've got a fast genie point here that's number two then we've got a pod point slow uh, charge your car and uh, various other things now this i find to be kind of limited in its use uh, it is like for example it's missing some of the charges so i know that i would normally use um there's a charger here. I wonder why it's not showing it. I'm not sure. There's a ch there we go. Uh, charge master. Maybe it did show. But my point here is that it shows that there's a fast charger available there. It's 50 kilowatts CCS, and uh, you can um, you could go there to charge. So that uh, is a really good way of finding charging stations on the Polestar system. Now, if you want to plan a long distance trip, let's see how you would do that. So if I click on here and then click, let's do my usual. Um, I'm going to type in Edinburgh and the the uh the satellite oh, i can't even spell edin uh, there we go edinburgh so the google maps on here is excellent it's very fast it's very responsive and you can download offline maps as well which is really useful in fact let me just show you that before i before i get to any of this because i find that feature to be quite quite good the settings is down here offline maps and then i've got my my map there that i've i've decided to download for offline use and that does make the map very responsive i found maybe you can download offline maps on the test i'm actually not sure but when i was using it i found it was a little bit laggy sometimes and this is actually snappier and more responsive so back to edinburgh it didn't seem to keep it there but let's go edinburgh very quick and responsive that's what i, I like about this okay so loading route and it, it says you're going to need a charging stop so let's uh add charging stop and now i'm at a really low battery percentage i'm down at like 12 percent. so this is the thing it doesn't know it's a kind of a shame you can't enter your starting battery percentage to think about the route that you might do tomorrow because i'm not going to start this journey with 15 percent. but it is allowing me to select where to charge so suggesting i go to this um 
charging location here on the way up to Horsham um, which is uh, I think that's the shell it says I should charge there for 55 minutes and then I should continue on up through the M25 M40 and go to Birmingham here and if you click on that so it'll give you it'll tell you so you could use the plug surfing card if you want but that actually is a waste of money you can do it with a shell it's a 150 kilowatt charger and we go back and then the next one is a 175 kilowatt charger on the way through birmingham and then the next one is a bp charge master or bp pulse 50 kilowatts and then the fourth one is um charge point charging station there so it's created a really nice plan for us um to then get to edinburgh at 2 13 in the morning with 31 percent battery remaining so the thing i like about the way that this has done it and this seems to do it quite well is that each of these are except for the first one multiple charges so the risk with this is that if you get there and you find you've got no backup plan you could find yourself a bit stuck what if for example that charger doesn't work or there's someone using it that would be uh, inconvenient so my tip is to if you're doing this in the Polestar is to have a look at where it's sending you because you can see here there's two charging stations and then the next one you can see there's two charging stations so it is important to try and go to locations with more than one charger now if you were charging up to um so let's let's have a look at this one that is the first one so the second one is this charger here um in birmingham so verta charging station so my point here is that if we weren't if we were at a full charge we might be able to get all the way to this one here so let's type in verta let's see if it oh it actually was there so verta charging station two hours 35 minutes and it is 163 miles so if you charged up to 100 percent today um i think there'd be no issue in getting there you'd likely have on a day like today so it's about 12, it's 14 degrees now probably have a good 200 to 210 miles so it would be absolutely fine so you could head off straight to that first location so if i go back to our original um uh journey that's interesting it didn't keep i suppose it didn't keep edinburgh because oh not that one i don't go to turkey let's try again okay edinburgh so calculating again because it doesn't know that we might charge up it's um it's assuming we're going to stop there so what i would aim to do this time is uh is forget about the first one and now say i'm planning to do this tomorrow i'm going to go to this location um on the way and that'll be our first stop in birmingham and then the next stop will be to um i'm sure i had more stops i had an extra one didn't it earlier anyway so we'll charge up there for 55 minutes and we'll ignore this stop and then we'll continue on to the next um point which is this one um it's a 200 200 kilowatt charger in penrith and we'll uh, charge up there and then we'll get to edinburgh so i think the system works really well but what i my tip with the polestar is to not just go for it like you might do in the tesla where you could literally just punch it in and go i think the the best thing to do in the polestar is to plan the route have a look at where it's suggesting that you charge check that they are two site locations and then it's well worth being a bit prepared making sure that you have <laughs> the right app or the rfid card it's too late if you're going tomorrow but um my point is that it's not quite as simple you do have to make sure that you are prepared for these trips but look at where you're going to go and then think about charging to 100 percent and then setting off to the first charger and then going to the second one after that but um yeah this is not a particularly unpleasant route to take so we would go um, up that way and then do these two charges stops on the way to get to edinburgh now let's have a look at another one i think i looked at norwich didn't i so let's go for norwich and we'll see what we would achieve with uh leaving here with almost no battery so it's 164 miles so the point is we could make it there without having to charge if we were at a full charge um now we could put add charging stop and what it's saying is to stop here at this location which is um uh, a pub 
it's a shame it's not open because of lockdown but that would be a good place to stop and have a drink and something to eat and then the next one is this gonna, is going to be the shell charging station so what it has done this time is it sent us to two locations that don't have backup options so again that's something that you might want to consider as to whether or not you really would like to do that um, but the system works and you can head off and you you'll be absolutely fine now what I personally prefer to do is to use an app like ZapMap. So let me just show you very quickly how you would plan that on your phone. So if I pop the ZapMap app over here, you can hopefully see that. Let's, um, let's just pop it in front of the screen. So if I clear that, and I'm going to clear these filters, now I'm going to click back and you can see that that's the map so i've set up a filter on my phone to allow me to search for all um ccs rapid charges so let's apply that and now i know the route that i'm going to take and i'm going to head up this way so i can see there that i'm going up on the m in m25 to the m11 so m25 m11 and then there's a charger there for example okay ecotricity with some issues reported so i might not want to use that one and then that's the shell and then we've got something up here we've got uh ecotricity again and then we've got that one which is broken so basically i'm demonstrating to you that this is not a very good system no uh, in all seriousness so we get to thetford here and i know that there's an instavolt there at this filling station it's slightly off the a11 but it's two two locations available and they're 50 kilowatt chargers so i might be thinking that that would be a good place to stop instead of going to the ones that it's recommending for me to go to now if i was driving up to edinburgh um i would probably have a good look at this and think okay well i'm going on the m40 where would i like to stop maybe i don't want to stop where it's telling me to um perhaps i want to stop there that's a bp pulse maybe i don't maybe i want to stop there so it's a shell recharge but my my point here is that you have the option of deciding where you want to stop with the Polestar and it can be really useful to think ahead my other filter that I've set up here is 100 kilowatt plus so on uh, the screen I could I could now zoom out and have a look at these 150 kilowatt chargers so here we go there's the one in Birmingham there's two there that would be a good one to use and uh, if we zoom out a little bit we could uh, have a look at let's see is there anything up on the way to norwich there is if you were to go that way there's three bp pulse um 150 kilowatt charges available at that location so these kinds of filters can be very useful to plan long distance drives there's another one up here for example this is a uh, there's two of them there so you could um you could you could do this and then you could navigate to those for example um instead on the on the system in the Polestar and use that as your way of planning the trip to your destination. Okay, so I hope this has been a useful video. It's been good to compare the two systems. Tesla's supercharging network is excellent and it is so easy to just get in the car, enter a destination and drive off and know that it will look after you and help you get there with the minimum hassle. The Polestar system is good too, but obviously it's unfortunate they haven't got their own network, but that that's not something that a manufacturer, small manufacturer like Polestar are going to be able to do in competition with, with Tesla but uh, it does have a good system that will get you to your destination and as the charging network grows in the UK this will get better and better what we do need to see is more multi-charger locations and motorway services at the moment there's so many individual installations like a single shell or a single BP pulse they're great but if it's if something breaks then you have no backup option what I really like are the locations where you you see multiple ionity chargers or multiple instavolt chargers that's the way things are going to go in the future hopefully not at the prices i honestly charge because it would be nice to see people charging prices closer to that that you can get from uh tesla but uh, Polestar does do a very good job of helping you out. And uh, I, I would say that I actually prefer the way in which the map system works in the Polestar. It's slightly more slick and I do really enjoy using Google Maps. So I hope this video has been useful. And if you could subscribe down below, likes, comments, all of that's very helpful. And I will uh, be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.